So, in this lecture, we will see some introductory concepts and define language formally. We also see some uh, language operations. A language can be seen as a system suitable for expression of certain ideas, facts and concepts. In this course, we have this formal languages and automata theory. We will first see the concepts of formal languages. First, we will see what are the various features, common features across different languages. Because while discussing the languages, we need to consider different kinds of languages like natural language, programming languages and so on. So, what are the various features of a language or common features across the various languages? We see that a language is a collection of sentences. A sentence is a sequence of words and a word is a combination of syllables. So, while formal learning of a language, we consider that there will be a script. Therefore, it is necessary to understand the alphabet of the underlying language, it is the first step for formal learning of a language. Then, what are the various words in this language and finally, how to form sentences from these words. We will see that the last step in the learning of languages is the most difficult part. So, therefore, we will postpone for a time being that part and will concentrate on the other two parts. Let us first see what are the common features of a word and a sentence. We find that both are just sequence of symbols from the underlying alphabet. Consider this English sentence a decent problem is a function with a one bit output yes or no. We observe that this nothing but sequence of symbols from Roman alphabet or English alphabet and some other special symbols like colon, quotation mark, full stop and a special symbol which is a blank space which is used to separate the various words. Thus, abstractly a sentence or a word may be used interchangeably. So, we do not distinguish between sentence or a word. Now, this we go for definitions of alphabets and strings. We define an alphabet as a non empty finite set. For example, say A, the set containing A, B may be considered as an alphabet. We denote an alphabet by sigma. If we have more than one alphabet, then we might be using the subscript sigma 1, sigma 2 to denote the alphabets. Sometimes, we might also use some other symbols say gamma to denote an alphabet. Now, for example, we can have an alphabet like this which contains only a single symbol or we may have an alphabet like this which contains some arbitrary symbols like this. So, this has four different symbols. Normally, we use the small letters from English alphabet towards the beginning say A, B, C and so on to denote the symbols of the alphabet or sometimes we use the digits say 0, 1, 2 and so on to denote symbols.
Now we define a string. A string over an alphabet sigma is a finite sequence of symbols of sigma. For example, just consider sigma to be the set containing the letters a and b. Now, we can define some strings which is a finite sequence of symbols from this set. For example, say a b is a string over this alphabet. Similarly, a b b is also a string containing three symbols from this alphabet. Then a b a b is also a string from this alphabet containing four symbols. Normally, to define we denote a sequence by say a 1, a 2, say a n for a i belonging to sigma, that is how we represent the sequence, but for our convenience we represent the string the sequence by a 1, a 2, a n that means just by writing the symbols one after another, just juxtaposing the symbols together. So, this sequence is denoted by this sequence. So, this is a string. So, in the context we see that the empty string is denoted by this. So, in this context we will be using a special symbol epsilon to denote the empty string, because this is required. Now, a string is also known as a word or a sentence. Therefore, we will be using the terms string, word and sentence interchangeably. We see that the set of all strings over an alphabet sigma is denoted by sigma star. For example, if sigma is say 0 1, then sigma star may be say epsilon, because epsilon is a string 0 itself is a string, 1 itself is a string. So, 0 and 1 contains only one symbol and epsilon contains no symbol, then 0 0 would contains two symbols 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 and so on. So, if we collect all those things which can be formed by using the symbols from sigma, we get sigma star. Although we see that sigma star is infinite, it is a countable set. Now, let us see some operations using which we can manipulate strings and we can generate strings. First, let us see the operation concatenation. Now, we define say x is a string. Normally, we use the symbols towards the end of the English alphabet to denote a string. For example, w, x, y, z, these are used to denote a string. Just consider a string x and another string y. So, the concatenation of string x and y is denoted as x y. So, if x equal to a 1, a 2, say a n and say y equal to b 1, b 2, say b m, then x y is nothing but the string that we get just by juxtaposing x and y that is a 1, a 2, a n, then b 1, b 2, b m. So, if x has n symbols in it and y has n symbols in it, together x y will have n plus m symbols in it. For a string x and an integer n greater than equal to 0, we write x to the power n plus 1 as x to the power n 
x with the base condition x to the power 0 equal to epsilon. That is x n is nothing but a string which is obtained by concatenating n copies of x. Whenever n equal to 0, the string x 1, x 2 up to x n represents the empty string epsilon. For example, if x equal to the string a b, then x to the power 0 is epsilon, x to the power 1 is a b itself, x to the power 2 is a b a b, x to the power 3 is a b a b a b and so on. Now, let x be a string over an alphabet sigma. For every symbol a belong to sigma, the number of occurrences of a in x shall be denoted by modulus of x suffix a. And we denote the length of a string x as modulus of x, which is defined as summation of numbers of occurrences of all symbols in a. That is, the length of a string is obtained by counting the number of symbols in the string. For example, if x equal to say b b a, then length of string x is 3, because there are 3 symbols in it. If x equal to epsilon, that is an empty string, then the length of a string is 0. If x equal to say a b a b a, then the length of a string x is 5. If we denote a n to be the set of all strings of length n over sigma, then one can easily observe that sigma star is the union of a n for n greater than equal to 0. And hence, since a n is a finite set, sigma star is a union all those ends must be countably infinite. Let us see some more string manipulation operations. We define a substring like this. So, if x that means x is a substring of y, if x occurs in y, that is you can write y as u x v for some strings u and v belong to sigma star. For example, if x equal to a b b a, then we say that b b is a substring of x, because you can write x as u y v, where u equal to a and v equal to the string a and y is the string b b. So, in this case this string b b y is substring of x. Similarly, this b a will be a substring of x. In this case u equal to a b this part and v equal to epsilon this part. Similarly, you can find many other substrings from this string x. We say that x is a prefix of y if this u equal to epsilon. For example, if x equal to say a b a b b, then we see that x can be written as u y v, where u equal to epsilon y equal to a b a and v equal to b b. That means, x can be written as u y v and here u equal to epsilon. So, this y a b a is a prefix of x. Similarly, 
we see that the for string a itself is a prefix of x. Similarly, the string a b is a prefix of x, string a is a prefix of x, a b is a prefix of x, a b a is a prefix of x, a b a b is a prefix of x. Similarly, the whole string a b a b b is a prefix of x. Similarly, we can say that epsilon is prefix of every string. So, these are the only strings which are prefix of x. Similarly, we define a suffix. We say that x is a suffix of y if b equal to epsilon. So, if we write for the same string a b a b b, if we write x to be say u y v, where v equal to epsilon, say y equal to a b b and u equal to a b. In such a case, we say that y that means, this a b b is a suffix of x. Similarly, you can find out all the suffixes. For example, say b will be a suffix of x, b b is a suffix of x, a b b is a suffix of x. Similarly, b a b b is a suffix of x and finally, the whole string a b a b b is a suffix of x. And we say that epsilon is a suffix of every string x. We adopt this notation modulus of y with suffix x to denote the number of occurrences of a string x in y. We see that strings are basic elements of a language. Let us now define formally what a language is. We define a language over an alphabet sigma a subset of sigma star. Since sigma star contains all the strings from the alphabet, any subset of that set consists of a language. Let us see some various examples. Since a language may be any subset, so empty set phi is a language over any alphabet. The singleton set containing the empty string is also a language over any alphabet. Please note that these two sets phi empty set and the singleton set containing epsilon are not identical or, or not same because the language empty set does not contain any string, but the singleton set contain a string namely epsilon. Also you see that the cardinality of the empty set is 0 whereas the cardinality of the single set is 1. Another example of a language is for example, say the set of all strings over G, the alphabet 0 1 that start with 0. Similarly, the set of all strings over A B C having A C as a substring is also an example of a language. Let us see some more examples say the set of all strings of her some alphabet sigma with even number of A's. Just consider what are strings that may be dear in this language. Since the language contains the strings containing even number of A's, so therefore, A A will be in the language the string A or a b a will be in the language, then a b a b b will be in the language because numbers of strings numbers of a's in this in all the strings are even, but a b b does not belong to this language because numbers of a's in this string is not even. Similarly, the set of all strings of her some alphabet sigma say containing say a and b 
with the number of A's is equal to the number of B's is also an example of a language. And you can find out many things which are in the language and which are not in the language. Consider the set of all palindromes over an alpha, alpha, alphabet sigma. That is also an example of a language. Palindrome means all those words or strings which reads same from left and right. The set of all strings over some alphabet sigma that have an A in the fifth position from the right. Just consider this language and see that the string A B A A B A A belongs to this language because the symbol A appears in the fifth position from the right, whereas A B B B B A B does not belong to the language because in the fifth position from right A does not appear. Similarly, the set of all strings over some alphabet sigma with no conjugative A's is also an example of a language and you can give many other examples of language. For example, the set of all strings for A B in which every occurrence of B is not before an occurrence of A. Now, since the, since the language are sets, we can apply various set operations such as union, intersection, complement, difference and so on. Similarly, the notion of concatenation which was used in case of strings can also be extended to languages. We define the concatenation for language like this. Concatenation of a pair of language L1 and L2 is a set of all strings x, y such that x belongs to L1 and y belongs to L2. Let us give some examples. Say, L1 is a language containing say the strings 0 and 0 1, whereas L2 is the language containing the string say 1 1 0. Then L1 and L2, L1 and L2, the concatenation of L1 and L2, the set of all strings that you can have by concatenating the first string from uh, two strings, the first one is from L 1 and second one from L 2. That means, say 0 1 1 0, then 0 1 1 1 0. These two will be the only strings that you can get by concatenating L 1 and L 2. Now, suppose L 1 is the same language and L 2 or say this L 3 other language, say it is 1 0 and 0 0. Then L 1 L 2 sorry L 1 L 3 will be a set of all strings so 0 1 0, 0 and 1 0, then 0 0 0 then 0 1 1 0 and 0 1 0 0. So, it will have 4 strings. In general, if L 1 has m strings and L L 2 has n strings, then L 1 L 2 will have at most m into n strings. We see that concatenation of languages is associative, that is for all languages L1, L2 and L3. L1 concatenation L2, concatenation L3 can be written as L1 concatenation with concatenation of L2 and L3. So, in general, 
we write it as L1, L2, L3 without any parenthesis. Then the number of strings in L1, L2 is always less than or equal to the product of individual numbers. We have already mentioned it. We see that L1 is a subset of L1, L2 if and only if epsilon belongs to L2 and also the property epsilon belongs to L1 if and only if L2 is a subset of L1, L2. We write L to the n to denote the language which is obtained by concatenating n copies of L. That means, L to the power 0 is the single set containing epsilon and L to the power n is concatenation of L to the power n minus 1 and L for all n greater than equal to 1. For example, if L is say A B, and B. L to the power 0 is epsilon, L to the power 1 is L itself and L to the power 2 will be we just concatenate the various strings say A B, A B, A B, 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 A B, and those are only strings that we get from by applying concatenation of L with L. In the context of formal languages, another important operation is cleanster. So, we define cleanster on language L as union of L to the power n for n greater than equal to 0 and we denote it as, as L star. For example, for example, if L equal to 0 1, or say if L equal to 0, then L star will be union of L to the power 0 that means epsilon, L to the power 1 that means the 0 itself, L to the power 2 is 0 0, L to the power 3 is 0 0 0 and so on. That means, we get all the strings that can be formed by using 0 or more zeros. Since an arbitrary string in L n is of the form x 1, x 2 up to x n for some x i belongs to L and L star is denoted as union of all those L to the power n for n getting to 0, we see that L star can be written as x 1, x 2, x n for some x i belongs to L. That means, a typical string L n is a concatenation of finitely many strings of L. Note that the clean start of the language L equal to 0 1 over the alphabet 0 1 is L star which is a union of L to the power 0, union L, union L 2 and so on. So, which is nothing but a single thing of Cylon union 0 1, union 0 0, 0 1 1 0 1 1 and so on eventually we will get the set of all strings over sigma. That means, if we take sigma as a language over sigma, then the our notation of sigma star is consistent with the clean star. We define positive clause of a language L which is denoted as L plus as union of all L to the power n for n greater than equal to 1. That means, L star is simply L plus union singleton epsilon. Now, we have represented or described different kinds of languages, but 
if we describe the language using or represent the language using a form which is called cellular form, it helps us under understanding various properties of language better and also it gives some very elegant representation. Just consider a set of all strings 0 1 that start with 0. This, this is an example of a language. Let us represent this in cellular form. So, you see that every string here in this language can be written as or seen as 0 x that means, 0 must be there in the first place and x may be any string over 0 1. So, therefore, we can write it as the set of all strings 0 x such that x belongs to 0 1 star. So, we just set build, build a representation for the given language. Just consider this set, the set of all strings over a b c that have a c as substring. So, how do we represent this in using cellular form? So, any string in this language can be written as x a c y. So, where x may be any string over a b c, y may be any string over a b c and a c must appear in this string. So, therefore, we can represent this language l as l equal to x a c y such that x and y belongs to sigma star, where sigma is a b c. So, this is a set filter form for a given language. Similarly, the set of all strings over some alphabet sigma with even number of s, we can represent this in cellular form by using the notation that we adopted. For example, in this case, we can write it as any string x that belongs to sigma star, which is basically a b, such that the number of occurrences of a in x is twice n for some n. So, that is how we represent the given language containing even numbers of s. Again, the set of all strings of our sum alphabet sigma with the number of a's equal to the number of b's. Again, the same notation comes in handy to represent this. So, all those strings x belongs to sigma star such that number of occurrence of a and number of occurrence of b in the string are same. Consider this the set of all polynomials over an alphabet sigma. To represent this, we can use the notation the reversal. That means, the palindrome can be written by the set of all strings x belonging to sigma star such that x equal to x to the r, where x to the r is nothing but the reversal of the string. That means, if x equal to a 1, a 2, a n, then x to the r is simply a n, a n minus 1, a 2, a 1. Now, since in case of palindrome, every string should read identical from left and right, we have this condition. Similarly, one can find out the cellular form for all these languages. Say, the set of all strings over some alphabet sigma that have an A in the fifth position from the right. So, in this case, we can write it as x a y, since a must appear in a fifth position, the set of all strings x a y of the form x a y, such that x may be any string from sigma star, y may be any string from sigma star, but with the condition that the length of y must be equal to 4, since a must appear in the fourth position, is fifth position. Similarly, the set of all strings of our some alphabet with no consecutive edge. 
again we can represent it in cellular form like set of all swings x variant to sigma star such that there is no occurrence of the string a a. So, this is equal to 0. The set of all strings over a b in which every occurrence of b is not before an occurrence of a. So, occurrence of b should not be before an occurrence of a. So, every string here must be of the form a to the power m b to the power n. So, every occurrence of b must be preceded or, or have to be preceded by some edge. If a occurs, then b cannot occur before a. So, all those strings of this form for some m n get are equal to 0. Now, let us see some exercises. Consider language L such that which contains all strings over A B such that number of A's is odd because it is twice n plus 1 for some n. Give 5 strings each which are in L and not in L. Consider the language L containing all those strings from 0 1 such that the length of the string length of every string is prime. Give 5 strings which are not in L also list the twin any two strings in L. Represent the following language in cellular form. A set of all strings over 0 1 that have 1 in the third position from the left. A set of all strings over A B C that end with B B. The set of all strings over A B that have at least 2 occurrences of A B. The set of all strings over A B that have at least 2 occurrences of A B A. Let us see some more exercises. Let L 1 is this language contain the strings A and A B. L 2 is A A B and A B A. Compute L 1 L 2 concatenation of the two languages. Similarly, compute L 1 L 2 given L 1 is a single set containing 0 and L 2 is sigma star. And just consider the language L 1 of the form x a where x belongs to sigma star and L 2 of the form b y, y belongs to sigma star. Describe the language L 1 L 2 in English. Let L 1 be a to power i b to power j i j greater than equal to 0 and L 2 be a to power m m greater than equal to 1. Write L 1 interaction L 2 in cellular form and the properties that we discussed earlier may be proved. So, that concatenation of language is associative that is for all language L 1, L 2 and L 3. L 1, L 2 concatenation with L 2 equal to L 1 concatenation with L 2, L 3. Then, so that the numbers of strings in L 1, L 2 is always less than or equal to the product of individual numbers and the other two properties as well. So, L 1 is subset of L 1, L 2 if and only if epsilon belongs to L 2. Similarly, epsilon belongs to L 1 if and only if L 2 is a subset of L 1, L 2. Let us show that concatenation of languages is associative. That means, if L 1, L 2 and L 3 are languages, then L 1 concatenation L 2, L 3 is equal to L 1, L 2 concatenation L 3. 
to prove this first observe that the concatenation of string is also associative. That means, if x, y, z are strings then first concatenate y and z and take the concatenation of x with that string it will be equivalent to x y concatenation z. Therefore, you can write it as x y z. Now, to show that concatenation of string is concatenation of languages is associative just consider any string x belongs, which belongs to L 1 concatenation L 2 L 3. By definition we see that x can be written as x 1 x 2 where x 1 belongs to L 1 and x 2 belongs to L 2 L 3. Therefore, since x 2 belongs to L 2 L 3, we know that x 2 can be written as some y z or y 1 y 2, where y 1 belongs to L 2 and y 2 belongs to L 3. That means, x equal to x 1 x 2, x 1 y 1 y 2, y 1 belong to L 2 and y 2 belong to L 3. Now, since concatenation of string is associative, we can write it as x 1 y 1 y 2. Now, again here x 1 belongs to L 1 and y 1 belongs to L 2. Therefore, x 1 y 1 belongs to L 1 L 2. Hence, we can write it as some z y 2 where z equal to x 1 y 1 and z belongs to L 1 L 2. Therefore, we say that or we can conclude that x belongs to L 1 L 2 concatenation L 3. Therefore, every string that belongs to this set L 1 L 2 L 3 it will belong to L 1 L 2 L 3. Similarly, the converse can also be proved. Now, let us prove the property that L 1 is subset of L 1 L 2 if and only if epsilon belongs to L 2. We observe that the if part is straightforward. For instance, if epsilon belongs to L 2, then for any x belonging to L 1, we have x equal to x epsilon that belongs to L 1 L 2. On the other hand, suppose epsilon does not belong to L 2. Now, note that a string x belonging to L 1 of shortest length in L 1 cannot be in L 1 L 2. This is because if x equal to y z for some y belonging to L 1 and a non empty string z belonging to L 2. Then length of y is less than length of x. Now, this is a contradiction to our assumption that x is of shortest length in L 1. Therefore, L 1 is not a subset of L 1 L 2. Hence, the proof.